In part 6 of the Unit 9 notes, we are going to be covering percent yield calculations. Percent yield, the percentage of product actually obtained when compared to what should have been obtained. This is the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield. The actual yield is the amount of product recovered at the end of a chemical reaction. This is something that you will either be told is actually produced within a word problem, or if you were to do a lab, it's how much your lab group would actually obtain at the end. The theoretical yield is the amount of product that a chemical reaction should produce based on stoichiometry. So you would often not be given this actual amount within a word problem, and you would have to use stoichiometry in order to, to determine it. In our first checkpoint question, we are told that we have nine grams of water reacting and 15.1 grams of calcium hydroxide is formed. What is the percent yield of calcium hydroxide? So looking at the numbers that we were given, it says that we have 15.1 grams of calcium hydroxide formed. This is going to be our actual yield. So we are going to save that for the end, for our percent yield calculation. What we're going to start with is the 9.0 grams of water. If I were to take 9.0 grams of water, and I wanted to know how much of the calcium hydroxide I was supposed to make based on that, I could solve that with a simple three-step conversion. So I'm going to cancel out grams of water on my way to moles of water. In the middle section, I'm going to cancel out moles of my substance A, which is water, to moles of substance B. In this problem, we're talking about calcium hydroxide, so that's going to be the CaOH2. Then I'm going to cancel out my moles of calcium hydroxide on my way to grams of calcium hydroxide. All right, now for filling in the numbers. One mole is equal to the molar mass when we're talking about the grams of water. So that is going to be 18.02. And I can get that by adding up the two hydrogens, which are 1.01 each, and the oxygen, which is 16.00. The mole to mole ratio is from the balanced equation. So I have one of the calcium hydroxide for every two of the water. So that's one over two. For the last part, one mole of calcium hydroxide I have a single calcium here. This two distributes to both the oxygen and the hydrogen. So I have two of each. And when I add all of that up, I get 74.10 grams of calcium hydroxide. Now, if I were to multiply and divide across this equation, I end up with 18.5, but that's going to have to be rounded because I only have two significant figures in my initial number, 9.0. So I'm going to round that to 19 grams of calcium hydroxide. So what I just determined here is the theoretical yield. Now in order to determine the percent yield, we saw that it was the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100. So I'm going to take my 15.1 grams that they told me was actually made. I'm going to divide that by the 19 grams which I should have made. I'm going to multiply that by 100. And I'm going to round for the two significant figures that are here, because I have 2 versus 3. So that's going to round to 79%. In our next checkpoint question, we are looking for a percent yield if 13.1 grams of calcium oxide is produced. So this is going to be my actual yield. I'll hold on to that for later. When 28.4 grams of calcium carbonate is heated. So this is the amount that's actually reacting. So just like in the previous problem, I'm going to start with 24.8 grams of calcium carbonate. And I'm going to do a three-step conversion to my grams of calcium oxide. I'm going to find out how much of that calcium oxide I was supposed to make. So grams of CaCO3 here to moles. 
then moles of CaCO3 to moles of CaO, and then moles of CaO to grams of CaO. One mole is equal to the molar mass. We have a single calcium, a single, ox a single carbon, and then three oxygens. So if you were to add all of that up, that's going to be 100.09. All of our coefficients here are going to be one. And I'm looking at these two compounds specifically, so that's a one over one. And then one mole is equal to a single calcium and a single oxygen. So that's going to add up to 56.08. Going to multiply and divide across here, we also have three significant figures that we're going to need to round to. So that comes out to 13.9 grams of calcium oxide. So this right here is my theoretical yield. So based on the stoichiometry, this is how much you would expect to make. We're going to take our actual yield, which is 13.1 grams. We're going to divide that by our theoretical yield, 13.9. And then multiply that by 100. So for this one, we have 94.2, and that is our percent yield. All right, so we have one more checkpoint question. In this one, we are looking for the percent yield if 60.0 grams of silver is produced. So this is going to be my actual yield. when 20.0 grams of copper reacts. So I'm going to take my 20.0 grams of copper, and do a three-step conversion to get to my grams of silver. So grams of copper to moles of copper Moles of copper to moles of silver. And then moles of silver to grams of silver. Now since both of these substances are elements, we don't have to add up multiple atoms together. We're just going to look at the molar mass on the periodic table. So one mole of copper is going to be equal to 63.55. We have two silver for every one copper. So it's going to be a two over one. And then one mole is equal to the molar mass of silver, which is 107.87. Going to multiply and divide across, we have three significant, uh, significant figures in our starting value here. So I'm going to round to three sig figs. That's 67.9 grams of silver. So this is my theoretical yield. I had an actual yield of 60.0 grams. I was supposed to have 67.9. And I'm going to multiply by 100. Rounding for three significant figures, since these are both three sig figs, that's going to come out to 88.4. Alright, that concludes part 6 of the Unit 9 notes. When we come back in part 7, we are going to be looking at percent composition.